Hey, before this video starts, I would like to let you know about my current goal at Patreon. If we reach 50 supporters, I will stream the entirety of the 1000 Miles Championship in Gran Turismo 4 Randomizer, a series of endurance races with classic cars where every race can take 3 to 4 hours. I will talk in detail about this challenge at the end of this video. You'll get early access to my videos from $3 a month on Patreon. Follow the link in the description to help our channel reach this goal. Now, I hope you enjoy my new video. The word underrated has been used in countless YouTube videos to describe, well, anything. However, this term still applies to the Tokyo Extreme Racer franchise, a series of racing games developed by Genki which managed to bring the Wangan Racer experience better than anyone else. In this video I am playing Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero for the PlayStation 2 and driving a yellow Lancer Evolution 3 to become the fastest racer in Japan. I will not use any other cars through my playthrough, maybe bringing a rally car to the Wangan isn't my brightest idea. Now, this franchise has a few quirks which create a unique racing experience. For one, races don't take place in closed circuits, but the open highways of Japan with more areas unlocking as one beats more opponents. In order to start a race, one has to flash their headlights at an opponent who's cruising through the map. Once the race starts, both the opponent and the player have a health bar, called SP by the game. This SP bar decreases whenever one of the racers is behind the other, depleting faster the further they are from each other. It also depletes by crashing into walls, traffic cars and opponents. You will see each of these elements into play as we start this adventure. The first area to tackle for this Lancer is the Tokyo C1 loop, where I meet the first crew of challengers, another quirk of this franchise where opponents have their specific crew rather than being a nameless AI driver. Sometimes these follow a theme like driving a specific car, which is the case with this first crew I challenged, the rolling guys. They swear by the Toyota AE86, who manages to be quite competitive in the C1 loop as it benefits handling and acceleration, but this isn't initial D and this car Guys fall one after the other, to the point where I manage to summon their boss, as my laggy brain forgets where's the throttle button, comes with switching between games with different controls. I manage to outpace this AE86 and defeat my first crew. Given I can't refresh my opponent lineups without returning to the garage, this marks the end of my first night. The next crew I challenge is called Carving Edge. They drive different Honda cars, mostly Type R Civics and Integras. They are more competitive but my yellow Yellow Evo has a slight edge over them. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because this screw is called Carving Edge? Oh, you didn't like my joke. Fine, let's race. This racer is part of the 13 Devil's Crew, the fastest in all of Tokyo, and they present the first difficult race of my run. Off the line, I am outpaced by this yellow S13 and I have to rely on my blocking skills, using traffic to my advantage as well as I close any door my opponent here can have. It seems my jokes on blocking started to play with Jackknife's mind here as he tries to push me off, but I maintain my pace, 12 devils left. The next crew is Little Gang, they just give this vibe of being a group of friends who want to race their entry level cars. They drive all sorts of cars, including a wagon which makes them instantly cool, despite not being a challenge for the Lancer. I did find the slightly more challenging racers with the Galaxy Racers. They drive faster cars such as this Mark III Supra who takes off, right now my car is more mostly stuck as I need more money to afford an engine upgrade. 300 horsepower isn't enough against these faster cars and I'm starting to struggle. I am saved by the fact that AI struggles with cornering at times and it has to break rather hard for some corners or they just crash against a traffic car, such as the Galaxy Racer's team leader who couldn't squeeze between these cars. Traffic in this game shall be classified as a weapon. You'll see why as this run continues. My night isn't over as I encounter the second member of the 13th Rebels, True Slide, who's driving a Z32 who shows its superior power as we start the race. It's hard to block in a highway with multiple lanes, so I have to weave like crazy. Despite a few good moves, I still lose the lead as we exit a corner. I manage to hold on until my opponent falls victim to an unfortunate traffic spot.
respond, forcing it to break and granting me the lead for a second time. It remains close to me for quite some time, making this battle longer because the further you are from an opponent, the quicker the SP bar depletes, or I can just crash into him so I can force him to drain whatever's left and win the race. This race took a few attempts because this Nissan is way faster off the line and I never managed to catch up. I had to retry this race until I got lucky, but at least I'm done with- Oh, We have a problem here. Yes, you haven't left a like on this video. I want to hear those intense clicking noises. Also, we are close to 3000 subs, so subscribe while you're at it. Thanks. Here comes the following member of the 13 Devils, Unhappy Angel. I have a double boss battle and it did catch me off guard. This S14 has over 500 horsepower and it manages to leave me in the dark. My attempts only managed to prove how futile it was to continue as I will need insane luck in order to win. A simple crash wouldn't cut it, my car just doesn't have enough acceleration, something I could fix with better gear ratios, but I can just quit out of a boss battle, so I had to load my previous save and repeat this entire night, beating the galaxy racers and choose light again. With these guys defeated, I can finally see if my improved gear ratios will be enough to compete against Unhappy Angel. I admit this tunnel area on C1 does help my efforts, as there are less lines to block. By now I barely look at the road ahead of me, instead focusing on the tiny rearview mirror at my disposal, matching my opponent's moves to block their path at every chance I'm given. The idea of racing has gone through the window with so much contact, I can't believe this isn't a fighting game, but my strategy pays off as my opponent has to break before crashing into a truck, granting me some breathing room. While my acceleration has improved, my pace is still terrible and I have to keep my eyes focused on the S14, which keeps closing the gap, to the point where it manages to overtake me while squeezing between me and a traffic car. But I recovered the lead and managed to hold it until the end, scoring a victory. With this victory, I can finally buy the highest engine upgrade available to me, pushing my Lancer into the 400 horsepower territory and unlocking a new area of the map. This new area is called Shinkansho, the first where speed and power power matter more than outright handling. I happen to be at a disadvantage despite my recent upgrades, but the first crew I challenge doesn't present a challenge. They call themselves the Air Gangs and prefer the AE-86, pretty sure they all got a cup of water somewhere. I don't really understand why they keep trying, it's not going to work unless you drop an LS or something similar onto these things, which you aren't going to do because god forbid something American defiles your Japanese track toy. Talking about Japanese track Toys, I have to deal with a blistering quick pink Honda S2000 as the boss of the following crew, Cupid Arrows, a group of women who drive different Hondas. While quick, she loses control and I manage to pull away and win the race. This sort of situation is starting to become more common, as my opponents have better acceleration and top speed and I'm only saved by the fact they have to break. While challenging the crew dry crews, I had two incidents where they managed to outpower me through a long straight, and the Lancer barely gained any speed. The only reason why I won this race is thanks to a traffic car which I literally used to break before a turn. Good luck explaining that to the insurance company. My races are starting to be quite random as some of them can be over quickly and others can take some effort. The common factor with them is the AI who throws their race away as they cannot manage corners at all, something which the Lancer is quite good at. The boss of Dry Cruise presents a great example as they meet a traffic car off the line but they have enough pace to recover and overtake me, only to slam the brakes and give me the lead yet again. I did return to the C1 loop to beat the new set of crews which are just cruising about, starting with Max Racing. No, they aren't Max Verstappen fans, they just race in luxury sedans. I really like how 4 door saloons like these are viable in this game, however these guys don't manage to drive them too well, falling in quick succession to the mighty Yellow Evo. Another crew with a curious set of cars is Rat. They find themselves at the opposite end of the spectrum with K cars. Despite these lighter cars, they lack acceleration and top speed to challenge the Lancer as well. Maybe minivans can present a bigger challenge. Wait, what? Meet Rhythm R3, a crew focused around their sound systems, with some members even racing in minivans, which is a hilarious sight, really. My efforts have made the 13 Devils notice me yet again, sending their members after me. The first one is hard weapon. It happens to meet another hard object, a truck, followed by a wall, which is good because it 
could have beaten me otherwise. I wrapped this section with a double battle, the first one being against Fallen Blade, another member of the 13 Devils who drives a four-door saloon and makes a terrible maneuver locking himself behind a traffic car. That is painful. You deserve a big F, my friend. And here comes another one for revenge, Meet Bloodhound, with this Lexus which has been modified to look like a CLK DTM. Really curious build. This thing is scary as it has 820 horsepower. If we approach any sort of long straights, I lose. We start on the C1 loop which helps my case. My opponent struggles with handling but their pace allows them to cover for these mistakes, always remaining on striking distance. It even tries to strike one final time but the rest be ran out before overtaking me. All the power in the world won't help me without handling. This victory against Bloodhound didn't unlock a new area, but new crews have come to challenge the Lancer. The first one is Harmonize, which has a pretty cool icon. One of its members manages to embarrass me as our race starts. It's crazy how long it takes me to get up to speed while my opponents have instant acceleration. Speed keeps building until the S14 has to slam on its brakes and grants me the lead, becoming a mere blip on my rearview mirror. Outside this incident I didn't face much problem problems with Harmonize, neither with Windstars. The next crew on my list, even this blue twin of my Lancer fails to stop me. Chaos ensues as I start challenging the next crew, Elegant Wild. I lose control at the end of the first race and I manage to win because my opponent crashes right in front of me. We're both stuck here and another MR2 comes out of nowhere and crashes into us both, cause a 3 car pileup out of nowhere. Nice. This crew has some good cars, one of their members drives a white and SX which remains behind me through most of the race, always on striking distance and making contact with me. The boss of this crew drives a Toyota MR2 which is quick, and I kind of help them to meet a traffic car. Yes, contact is fine, but we don't cut chicanes here, those who watch my live streams will know. Despite my efforts, the MR2 closes the gap but takes the wrong lane and then is being squeezed by the Lancer and the wall. I try to crash my way into stopping them which doesn't work and it will away, and they throw it away by entering the next corner too fast and meeting a truck. God, I love the C1 loop. My evil deeds cannot be- Oh god, it's Batman. It's time to pay for my sins. I'm going to face justice. Oh, Batman's gone. Well then, good to see you I guess. Time to continue chasing crews. The next one is Tokyo Jungle and their boss drives a bright green Impreza and their base is strong. It takes some back and forth between us and it manages to snatch the lead right before losing. I was so shocked. They went straight into a traffic car, but their SP is so low they couldn't withstand a single well top, granting me the victory while being second. Next on the roster comes Team Alpha. One of their members is called Galtling Gun and proceeds to drive straight into a wall. They aren't known for their accuracy after all. This crew fell quickly, bringing the 13 Devils back to challenge me. The first is Mr. Sitar, who falls asleep at the wheel and crashes into a traffic car. And we have a Supra. Here comes I Ironheart who cannot squeeze between these two traffic cars and doesn't manage to recover from this mistake. These opponents happen to be quite tough really and I'm getting rather lucky with traffic spawns. Ironheart managed to stay close even if our battle was brief, however since I did beat him I managed to unlock the Wangan at long last. There's one catch, my car is totally useless in this endless strip of tarmac. In order to unlock more upgrades I decide to clean the new crews which appeared in other areas areas before stepping into the Wangan. First comes top level. They drive Lancer Evolutions just like myself and happen to be really competitive, to the point where it took multiple attempts to beat their boss. Ok, that one's totally my fault. That one isn't my fault though. The truck just slammed the door shut on me. That's fair. I managed to get lucky as my opponent crashes into a traffic car which allows me to catch up, barely. And I managed to win thanks to my good fortune. We meet more luxury sedans as I challenge SS Limit and they end falling. These races were over in less than a minute. The next crew is called ERO and the first race starts as my opponent challenges me, something which can happen during free run at times. And this race ends in less than a minute. Did he forgot he challenged me? This crew drives cars like the Mitsubishi 3000 GT which is often underappreciated. Totally a cool battleship. These cars are fast but their handling plays against them and the boss falls quick. Next one is Departures. A 
group who drives different Subarus and they have an astonishing pace until they meet a wall. They manage to be right behind me in no time. Bless the almighty rubber band. It really shows how I am unable to keep up with these cars and I'm safe by the handling, which is concerning as my engine upgrades aren't arriving yet. A similar story happens with Highway Outlaw, a crew which drives all sorts of different cars. I do have an interesting battle with a Mark III Supra as I crash and my opponent takes the lead again, but they meet traffic as well. After these pictures, the 13 devils jump me again. First comes Dying Star who's driving a blue Mitsubishi 3000 GT. I make a mistake as the race starts and I miss my upshift, giving them the chance to overtake me. However, they take a white line and they meet traffic. They have to break and I manage to recover some ground, followed by a strange entry into a small turn which allows me to take the lead, which I hold until they die bump into a traffic car and I score the victory. Next comes Dreamy Ghost driving an NSX. I am blocked by a truck and my opponent follows suit, going straight into a traffic car. This gives me a chance to recover first place. The SP bar is almost depleted but I crash again and my opponent joins me into crashing the same traffic car, granting me the victory. With this victory I am finally ready to step into the one gun and get my doors blown off. The first crew I challenge is called Double Mine and their second member shows my problem as we step into the one gun. I don't have the speed and acceleration to keep up, left in the dust by this RX-7 as they crash into a truck. Winning the race thanks to driver error isn't a good sign. I struggle trying to beat the following set of opponents who belong to Crew True Drive. The second opponent drives a 3000 GT, which beats me off the line and managed to hold onto the lead for some time. It seems my Lancer is more stable as they lose speed trying to control their car while avoiding traffic, enough to grant me the victory. I started to wonder what I was doing wrong, so I asked people who knew this game better than me in the Tokyo Extreme Racer Discord server which will be in the description of this video. Turns out I should have looked at the power curve of my Lancer, where it makes peak power at 6800 rpm, pushing it into the red line is slower and unnecessary, hindering my pace. My new gear setup allows me to be more competitive as I challenge the remaining teams on the Wangan and Yokohane areas, starting with Commander, a battle where the boss just slams the brakes and never comes near me again. The boss of Churai appears as I'm about to enter the C1 loop and fails miserably as they can't handle turns. The boss of Double Mine just stops existing in the middle of the race and I score another victory. These runs did take a few attempts, pretty much getting lucky against them. The next set of crews which I tackle are RR who worships the almighty Dorito. I am starting to be faster than my opponents and I manage to leave them behind, but the next crew is more challenging as they drive Vipers. Me, Thunder Dragoon. Yes, this spelling mistake is indeed intentional. This crew starts off easy and starts to get harder towards the end, with drivers who leave me in the dust and manage to throw the race away thanks to their own skill issues. I couldn't beat their boss until he just… yeah, I have no words for that. After this race, I was jumped by Tailgunner, the following member of the 13 Devils. This one took many attempts as we started the race in the middle of the Wangan and I couldn't get up to speed fast enough. This RX-7 is really quick and my only hope lies on their mistakes yet again. Everything is possible with a bit of patience however, and they slide straight into a traffic car, granting me another victory. There's only one crew left, APS. Their leader has a good pace until he manages to lose control and then stop vanishing from my rearview mirror, leaving the door open for the last of the 13 devils, Shadow Eyes. By now these opponents decimate me anywhere near the Wangan, so I have to bring them towards the C1 loop by keeping my car in out of pilot at the end of each race, letting it cruise until it reaches said area. After I pull away from the Supra, I can say my Oh, meet the Speed King. This is the fastest car in Tokyo. This R34 which looks like a calsonic skyline is here to beat me and oh, I guess not. I admit I got really lucky and he just went straight into two trucks because I wouldn't have a single chance in other areas of the highway. Thing is, my exploits have garnered the attention of an even faster crew, the Zodiac. We have entered the final stage of the game. The fastest crews in Tokyo are now cruising the highways and I have to defeat them all in order 
to become the fastest racer. The first of them is called TR Racing. Outside the usual maneuvering to help opponents meet traffic cars, the only opponent which gave me some troubles was their boss, who has a really strong start with their R34. This tighter section grants me the advantage until we reach an open straight, where they drive straight into the end of a truck. The first member of the Zodiac, Dark Ring Leader, comes after me and managed to show its stronger pace of the line, but they managed to win as they drive straight into another truck. The next set of crews were Black Knights, a group who drive Subaru wagons which didn't have any noteworthy races. Next comes Freeway, they drive different generations of the Skyline GTR and are really competitive. I did struggle for a few races where they left me in the dust, but they did make their fair share of mistakes, from going straight into a wall before a race starts, to losing control and blocking the road with their cars, leaving me unable to recover thanks to turbo lag of all things. That's one way to win a race, given how fast they are, most races involve a bit of back and forth between our cars before he can achieve a victory. Funny enough, their boss was the easiest as it kept slamming into walls. It works for me. Rings is the name of the next crew and they really didn't have much of a challenge with them. Races were short and simple, leading to the next member of the Zodiac, Midnight Rose, who drives a Mitsubishi 3000 GT with a Ferrari-like body kit. I don't know if this is really cool or outright sacrilege, I let the invisible hand of the YouTube comments decide this one. However, I don't know what happened here. This one isn't my fault, they just touch a banana peel or something. This race was over in a matter of seconds. I was expecting to unlock new parts after defeating Midnight Rose as I have been carried by the lack of driving skill my opponents have, but I didn't unlock any new engine parts. Given I'm on the final stretch, it was time to build the ultimate Lancer Evolution. Turns out there's a set of secret parts which are unlocked after reaching 1864 miles. In order to achieve these miles, you can leave your car in autopilot after defeating an opponent, which is exactly what I did. It feels so good to unlock this final engine upgrade and have 800 horsepower at my disposal. Then again, I'm facing opponents with way more, like this Stagia which has a thousand horsepower. But my new upgrades allow me to be more competitive against these crews. After cleaning house, I had three different races against Zodiac members. Hardleaf and his S15 wasn't a problem. Just like Blue Pressure, who I forgot to record, but they have the replay of a race. Nothing special here. The last one of this group is Golden Wing, who's driving an NSX and falls to the mighty evil like their previous crewmates. With all of these crews and Zodiac out of the way, it's time to bring this 800 horsepower Lancer to the Wengen at long last. The first crew I meet is called Upflug. It probably rings a bell as it's a tuner company. They drive some seriously quick cars. I can't even approach to this R34 until I'm way past 200 miles per hour. And their boss drives a 911 Turbo, which is really quick but seems to be a bit tricky to drive, or the AI can't handle it. Probably both at the same time. After defeating this 911, I am jumped by members of the Zodiac. No Crown King drives a Master Cosmos and didn't present much of a challenge, followed by Tying Pluto. This one is a bit more competitive as we start on a wide straight, allowing us both to put our power down. I managed to pull away and they never managed to approach again, but I am approached by another member of the Zodiac, Red Devil, who drives this R34 with a peculiar body kit. Off the line, it destroys me and manages to take the lead as the Lancer builds speed, but I manage to recover and win the race. The next crew is a Speedmaster. They have 10 members and these races weren't difficult, in no small part thanks to their spawns which are very close to the C1 loop rather than the Wangan areas. With their boss defeated, another member of the Zodiac challenges me. Purple Meteor with an R32 which rockets off the line and ends behind the truck. Queen's Knight comes next and they make the exact same mistake. I mean, who tries to overtake when there's no room to pass? Never mind. Oh, come on, does anyone sleep in this city? Exotic Eve challenges me as we enter the Wangan, forcing me to block until my Lancer builds enough speed to keep up with the Supra. I do have to block it a few times to protect my lead and run away with a victory, but surely this is the last. Oh, we're in trouble now. This is the leader of the Zodiac, White Charisma, who drives a 3-rotor RX-7 with over a thousand horsepower. I tried to race against him in the Wangan and the results were brutal to say the least. I couldn't keep up with it, so I had to lure him onto the C1 loop to be competitive, which I was. Then he crashed, and I crashed afterwards. It comes right past me as it goes straight into a wall and 
doesn't come back. The fastest racer in Japan is defeated by a slab of concrete and the yellow Lancer now holds the ground as the fastest car in Japan. Only the Tokyo Extreme Racer franchise is capable of delivering such a chaotic, fun experience and they will like if you try these games out. You won't regret it. The other thing you won't regret is staying until the end of this video as I will explain my new Patreon goal to you all. I have been playing Gran Turismo 4 Randomizer here on YouTube, a mod which changes every single price car in the game and it has been a blast. Last weekend I managed to beat the Mazda 787B with a Japanese touring car. I am planning on doing a championship called 1000 miles, which has 4 races, each one being at least 3 to 4 hours in length, given I'm restricted to classic cars from the 1960s. If we happen to meet this goal of 50 patrons, I will do these races live in 2 stream sessions. I have already done long streams past the 6 and 8 hour mark for you all, and I'm sure we'll all have fun watching which terrible price car I get after racing for 12 hours. I am grateful for the growth this channel has experienced on the last month and I can't thank you enough for staying with me through this YouTube journey. This past month of May has been a test of the pace I could hold doing YouTube full time. The reality is I've been doing this full time at a loss over a year already. Patreon is the best way to ensure I can continue this pace of videos and streaming in the future, along with improving the quality of my videos with better gear, bringing new games to the channel and watching me cut some chicanes at Fushi Speedway in Gran Turismo 4. Starting at $3 a month, you can have early access to my videos along with a special role on my Discord server. With that said, it's time to thank my current supporters are Patreon, or amateur racers, professional racers and world champions, Lane Dev, See What Happens Racing UK, Whiskey Tuesday, Tsundere Kiseli, Enzo Alassoneri, Raziel and Hunter Kaufman. If you wish to join them, follow the link to my Patreon in the description of this video. With that said, leave a like on this video if you have enjoyed it, a dislike if you didn't, and I will see you all on the next video. Take care and bye for now.